paddles here, fire away. That's just like mahogany, which I guess, you know, you can tell it's pretty, pretty rough. It just comes off the, the saw like that, right? But I'm getting a, a good price on it. So I needed to find an easy way to be able to sand everything down efficiently. Um, so that I could kind of get back what I saved on buying a rough cut wood. And have it coming out really nice. So, I do like it. Now this comes up. Um, it's very shiny, very fine dust. Was pretty much a rough cut, and so it's looking pretty nice now. So, uh, so what we're looking at here is a uh, kind of home build um, edge sander. No, sorry, stroke sander. So uh, let me just let me just show you uh, the, uh, the frame. Um, essentially, it's a set of legs, and uh, this here is the drum for the um, <coughs> the passive end of the belt. This here, um, this whole thing pivots on this uh, this bolt, right? So uh, this adjusts the angle like this, right? So you can track towards the center. It has a little bit of tape here to give it some uh, thickness, <coughs> so um, it uh, likes to maintain the middle of the uh, the drum, right? And it's uh, it's on springs, as you can tell here. So you can add as many springs as you need to. Uh, Get your desired tension. This um, thing here, when you twist it, pulls back on this mechanism. So, uh, depressing this slightly, this lug comes off. Now, what that does is that it, it pulls down on this and uh, gives it a little bit more stability so there's no vibrations coming out of this wheel. Um, not so much tension. Just this bolt pulls and the strings pull, so this whole mechanism stays stable in operation. All right, so here's your belt. This is 120 grit, and the belts come in at uh, 7.8 meters long. So this frame, which is basically just a truss, which I welded up, um, was kind of built to the size of the belts. Okay, and it's <coughs> tied into the wall on a couple of spots and uh, a little bit of a diagonal bracing as well. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, so it goes down diagonally into the legs. Okay, this is the motor side. So it's a 1.1 kilowatt motor, three phase. Um, by the way, all these parts were really um, just pirated from different other scrap materials, so I didn't really spend very much on this at all. This is basically the, the other side of this frame, which I cut in half and added the truss. To, uh, to lengthen it, 4.7 um, um, amps is what it runs at. Um, 1,400 revs. Now the revs do go up a wee bit because the um, the belt pulley is slightly smaller than the pulley of the motor, so it's probably coming in close to. I'm gonna take the mask off. I can't can't speak with it on. Okay, that's better. So it's probably coming in 100 and 1,500 revs for the. Uh, this little piece here and this serves it is basically just turn this into a lathe so I turned this drum I don't know if you can tell from the angle but it's got a slight um, I don't know what you'd call it camber or um, to help tracking it's got a slight bulge towards the center now I will say it was a little frustrating with the drum uh, because 
it, the, the, when you build it, if you build one, make sure it's adjustable because the angle, um, the pitch, I guess, angle of attack uh, needs to be adjustable and it's very sensitive because if it's half a degree off, it'll spin the track or that way, or the belt that way or that way, and the belt won't track properly. So it is working now. seems to be working pretty well for now. Uh, what it is, it's just a piece of very uh, slick stainless steel, very thin, and they've got a little grab hold, sort of a uh, handle on it, and it's very important that you carefully um, uh, round up all the corners, because if you get a corner to catch, I lost the belt because of that. And uh, eventually, at some future time, I will probably make this in such a way that it, you can use one of those handheld things that runs on a track, so you can go back and forth like that. Um, that might be a future project. In terms of safety features for this, um, it probably looks like you're putting your life in your hand with a belt going at God knows what speed um, around a home build contraption. However, the good news is <coughs> uh, that if the belt actually does break, uh, what happens is this section, if you're working here, you're usually actually the cause of the problem. So this section of the belt just gets fired into the wall and uh, doesn't go beyond the wall and the top section of the belt gets launched to the other side of the room so not a good place to be if you're where that fan is however if you're working it you're actually fine uh, because you're actually in the best probably the safest position relative to where the belt would end up um, so the belt doesn't actually lift off just the just the you know velocity and the ergonomics of it it just cr just drifts off like it was the tail of a kite in that direction. And since it has very little mass, it's actually just paper. Um, even if somebody was where the fan was and it hit him, I mean, they'd get um, scraped, but it wouldn't really be anything um, beyond that in terms of like life-threatening injuries. So at least that's as high. <coughs> I will not attempt <coughs> to prove myself wrong in any case. 